Imagine allowing your clients to easily transform their WordPress site with just a few clicks, turning it into a visually stunning masterpiece without ever giving them access to bricks. Sounds like a dream, right? Well, that's precisely what Good and Bricks, the revolutionary new WordPress plugin for bricks, promises, bridging the gap between design freedom and content flexibility. So Good and Bricks allows web designers to use the Bricks Builder to craft custom blocks or patterns, offering an unprecedented level of design control directly within WordPress and still allowing users to modify all the content inside each block. Now, this isn't just another design tool. It's a game changer for Bricks users who are delivering websites to clients. So with Good and Bricks, every block you insert can be tailored to perfection, then locked down so the end user can edit content without altering the design vision. Plus, updating a block's design globally without touching the content, that's now a reality. So if you're ready to elevate your web design game and give your clients or your own WordPress site the edge it deserves, stick around. I'm digging deep into Good and Bricks, how it works, showcasing its seamless integration with Bricks Builder and demonstrating why it's a tool you didn't know you needed until right now. So let me give you a demonstration first of all of what I'm talking about and then show you how easy it is to actually get this up and running for yourself. Now before we go any further, this is still a kind of beta product, it's not fully released yet, but I will link in the description down below to the Facebook group, the Slack group and also information on the website so you can take a look for yourself and see what pricing is available. No affiliate, no kickback, no nothing on my part. Okay, so if we go on. This is a typical page that our client would actually see. So you can see that we've got the Gutenbricks demo. If we take a look on the left hand side and click on our plus, we have these custom blocks inserted. And we also have some patterns. These are custom created inside bricks, but that's not the best part of it. Let me show you a bit more. Let's go back to our blocks. Let's add in, for example, this hero section. We'll click add it in, pretty cool looks exactly the same way as I designed it. But now I can start editing this as a user, not as a Bricks user. You'll notice that Bricks is nowhere to be seen on here. So for example, we want to add an image in. We'll click, we'll choose an image from our media library, which we can upload as well. And then that's now added in. Want to change the text? Easy. Now we can just change the text. So let's just change it. Pretty cool. We can easily select our button, double click. We can change the link on this to set it to go wherever we want to. Same for our call to action, change the text, all inside your. Once we finish this section, let's go and add another one in. Let's come in to add the plus. Let's say we want the features. Let's click to add it. And then we have our feature section. Again, we can click to add in an image, change the text, all those kinds of good things. So imagine now if you wanted to create a full suite of blocks that you wanted to hand off to your client so you have full design control, but they can change the content to anything they want to. This is exactly what Gutenbricks does, but it also does an awful lot more, but I'm gonna leave that for a different video because I'm waiting for it to still mature. In other words, we can start using ACF for various different things, not just ACF, but also Metabox and ACPT will be coming hopefully soon, it makes it even more powerful. This is a plugin that's being developed very, very quickly. So there's a lot of new features. So we've seen how easy all this is to work. Let's go and see how easy it is to set one of these blocks up and how everything works in the back end with Good and Bricks. So first of all, let me quickly say what I've got set up. Inside Bricks itself, when we come into our templates, I've got a template that I use as my kind of catch-all for my posts. It's a very simple template, but let me show you because it is kind of important. So this is the template. It's very, very simple. We've got a section with a container inside it, as you're gonna do pretty much always when it comes to Bricks. There we've got the post title, which is just one of the standard elements. And underneath that, we've got the post content element. It's important that you use this and also set it to work with WordPress and not bricks. This is what's going to show the content using those blocks, those patterns, whatever we create. Just as long as you've got that set up, then come into your settings and make sure your template settings is set up to be post type. In this example, posts. If you want to set one up for pages or you need to get very specific on where you want to use it, that's perfectly fine. Just need to make sure you've got that template set up and you have this post content set to WordPress as well. Once that's done, you're golden. So now all we need to do is start creating the blocks or the patterns that we want to use for our client, for our website. Again, let's come back into bricks, into templates, and let's add a new template. We'll give it a name. And then the important thing is that we set the template type correctly. 
If we open this up, you'll see we have two new entries, Gutenbricks block page and Gutenbricks block. We want to choose the block. We'll publish this, and we've now created the blank placeholder for our template. There's a couple of other things before we jump into bricks I want to show you, but these are totally optional. If you open these Gutenberg block settings options up, you'll see we've got a range of different blocks inside here that we can easily fill out to give our end user more information. So the title of the block, a description for it, and if you want to, guidelines and documentation on how to use it. So if you're handing this off without giving training, this could be a good way of giving information to the end user on how to use any or all of the different blocks and patterns you want to include as part of your site. And now we can start building our template in whatever way we want to. Now for ease, I've already copied one over and I'm simply gonna paste that in. There's my basic design, you can see everything is set up. I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna give this a bit of space. Now I'm using Core Framework for this, but obviously if you're not using a framework, it doesn't matter, just build your templates in whatever way you want. Drop in your placeholder images, text, content, and so on, all becomes editable. So I'm gonna give this a bit of space, I'm gonna simply just add in a little bit of space at the top. That looks pretty good. And that's all I need to do. But once you've got all this set up, we're gonna click on save, and we are basically done. Let's go and take a look at this on the front end now and how the end user can easily start interacting and adding content into this new block that we've added in. So I've reloaded my page that I'm working on, and as you can see, we now have this new block called content. You can see it automatically has created the thumbnail for it, so you can see exactly what's going on. And again, you can see this is fully responsive because the template that we created are totally responsive across all different devices. Again, pretty cool. So now all we need to do is go where we want to insert this, and we can just click to add our contact in, or you could click on the plus, and you can see all our different options are here. So we'll say we'll add contact, there's our contact information. We can now start coming in, changing the content inside here, change the image, draw a map in, whatever you want to do inside here. So all incredibly simple to work with. And like I say, when you take a look at the ACF and applying conditions and so on, you can get even more creative with this. I'm gonna keep that, like I say, until it's matured a little bit and I get a full understanding of how it works. But even this most basic level, let's say, for example, you didn't want to show this image, you just wanted to have this basic information above, well, you could just turn that on or off using an ACF switch. It is going to be pretty cool, but that's just the basics of it. It's going to go further. Okay, so we've seen how easy this is. Let's update this. Now, that's pretty cool, but one of the other things that makes this even more useful is the fact that as a designer accessing bricks, not our client, us as the designer, we can make changes to any of these block templates and that will reflect on the entire site. So for example, you may change the typography, you may change the layout, you may change a multitude of different things. All of that will be reflected as soon as you make a change to that master template. Let me give you an example. Let's choose our call to action for our contact information. And what we're gonna do is gonna come over to the style section into our background and we're gonna set a background color. It's gonna be pretty ugly, but it's gonna demonstrate how this works. So we'll set this to be bright yellow. Looks awful, but hey, it doesn't matter. We'll click on save and now we'll jump over here. We'll make sure this is updated and we'll just take a look at this by refreshing. It's now bright yellow with black text. And like I say, it looks pretty ugly. Let's add an image in just to make it look even worse. Pretty cool. So you can see we can very easily make changes globally throughout any of the templates you make and update that. If you're using a framework like Core Framework or ACSS or anything like that, you can make changes to everything and then all these templates will take effect immediately. It's incredibly powerful. Now, this is just scratching the surface of what you can do. Let me show you one other thing that I think is incredibly powerful. For example, let's say we wanna give the client the ability to drop in a section or a pattern that includes the sort of latest blog posts. So this is all dynamically generated and will change as new content is brought online. We can do that and we can make sure they can't edit that content. So for example, let's come into the patterns this time, come down to our custom patterns, and we're gonna choose the option right at the top, which is a kind of the blog layout. Consider this like a blog archive. We'll click to add this in, and you see that's now being added into our design. Now we can click on the various different elements, and it might look like we can make changes to them, but we can't actually edit anything. I'm clicking on the keyboard, nothing's happening. Same thing here, because these are dynamically generated, so they're not editable. However, if we come out to the blog section and we come to the title and all these bits and pieces, which can easily be changed and may need to be changed on an instance-by-instance -instance basis, you can change them. 
That's how cool this is. So you can create these kind of templates. And in a future version, you will have the ability to make templates editable, various different features editable or not editable. So you could customize different things. For example, you may not want to allow them to change the image, but still have the ability to change things like the tagline, the name, address, phone numbers, and so on. That will be possible in the future. This is incredibly powerful if you want to hand off to a client and still retain full design control. Now, you may be wondering, how do we go about getting things set up so they are either inside the block section or they're inside patterns underneath their own custom pattern section? Well, let me show you how to do that. When you create any kind of template inside Bricks, you'll notice that we have template tags and template bundles. Template bundles allows us to, well, kind of bundle things together, but we can use this to pull it into either blocks or patterns. It's incredibly easy. All we need to do, let's just say this one, the contact is just a block. All we're going to do is type in the word block. We'll add that in, and we've now set that to be a block. We'll update this, and it's now a block. Let's go back to our template one more time. Come into our blog archive list, which is what I've just shown you. We'll edit this. And you see this is set to be a template bundle of pattern. Now if we go into bricks and into Gutten bricks, you can see we've got these different options. So we've got blocks and patterns. So we say, do we want our bundles to be blocks or as patterns? Well, we're going to say our blocks are going to be used as blocks and our patterns are going to be used as patterns. As simple as that. So now anytime we give a tag of pattern, it will be put into the pattern section. Anytime we give it a tag of block, it will be put in the block section. So you can use this to organize your content. It might sound a little bit weird at the moment, but once you kind of set things up, it's very, very easy. And you can set a default, which if you don't set a value to any of these, it will automatically drop them straight into the blocks and all the patterns. It's up to you how you want to handle it. Save our changes, job done. If we jump over to the Client Experience tab, this is where we can set a few other parameters up. There's not a lot inside you at this point in time, but you can set a few things up. So we can set things for the ACF settings when we use those. So we set a default label that will appear inside the editor, you know, inside Gutenberg kind of thing. You can set text editing. So if you have it deleted text, it will fall back to the pre-filled out text or not, whatever your choice is. And then you can choose whether you want to show or hide patterns, media tabs, and so on inside Gutenberg itself. Integrations, this currently is only for ACSS, so if you are an ACSS user and you find you've got some weird things going on with any padding and so on, you may want to make sure you have this checked and enabled, and that should then sort any problems you have out. Other than that, there's just the license tab at the end, and you are pretty much golden. Now, I previously covered how you can do something similar, but without using Gutenbricks, just using standard Gutenberg blocks. If you want to check that video out, you can take a look in whichever corner it is right now and follow along. Check that out as your next video. Oh,